So I start my second turn by drawing a card from my from my uh, my deck, and um, this is good because I now have a good uh, a spread of all the colours. I've also got a, a card here that allows me to gain ammo. Ammo is good. We like ammo because ammo is is good for removing zombies. And now I have to draw two event cards. Pick one, discard one. So we've got um, they sense fear. During activation, the survivor may discard one focus to discard one stress. This is very good um, because I have stress I don't want. So, um, uh, and I do have focus, so that is also good. Um, neglect. Each survivor places a walker in his, her space for each stress he, she has. Ooh, that's not good, is it? Um, and I've got scent of flesh. The active... Uh, event is place a lock token in a random space. When the walker activates this turn, it moves towards that token, ignoring all survivors. At the start of the objective phase, discard that token. Ah, huh, okay. Um, place each walker in the reserve in a different random space. Oh, hold on. Place, place a lock token in a random space. When the walker activates this turn, it moves towards that token, ignoring all survivors. At the start of the objective phase, discard that token. Um, normally the cards have um, something you can do, um, but th there's nothing you can do there, so I guess you just get stressed at the end of it. Um, sorry, the neglect effect was place each walker in the reserve in a different random space. M my, re my reserve is massive. Isn't that's that, that's a little bit weird. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Um, the reserve for this for this mission is huge. Yeah, the, the, the reserve for this game is there's 20 walkers, uh, 20 basic walkers and five special walkers. This neglect effect says place each walker in the reserve in a different random space. That would bring, I mean, I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've already got seven zombies on the board. That's gonna, that's gonna just swarm the whole board. The game's gonna be over in seconds. I can't possibly neglect that. I'm gonna have to pick the red card. Um, so my neglect effect, sorry, bump in the camera, is each survivor places a walker in his, her space for each stress he has. So I'm gonna have to put two zombos on my space. Which isn't good news either, but at least they're basic zombos. Not the fancy pants zombos. Look, they're twins. Um, so they're there. Um, I, does Shane, I, I don't think Shane does count as a survivor. Um, I don't think that's a, I, don't, I think he has to count as an enemy. So, um, so yeah, he won't get them. Um, I said in the previous turn that I think he does count as a survivor, but thinking about it more, thinking about it logically, although he is technically a survivor in this game, he is an enemy. So I don't think, um, I don't think he, he counts as such. So I'm not going to put another two walkers on his space. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, I, I, I can't say for certain, which seems to be something, uh, something of a running theme with this game. Um, I can't say. For certain, I can't say for certain whether this token is supposed to have been removed. Um, normally, um, when you um, when you use a token, um, it gets removed from the board, um, so that you can you can do it again next turn. Um, but it doesn't say on on the card that that you remove it um, in this particular case. So I don't know. Anyway, the uh, center flesh event says I have to place a lock token on a random location. So I draw the top map here and um, that is in space A8 just up off camera over here you can see my shadow pointing just there so when the walker activates this turn it's going to move towards that lock token um, because I, it doesn't say that there's anything I can do to put one of my tokens on there I'm guessing that I'm just going to automatically get some stress at the end of the turn which isn't great. Um, I really wanted to use that they sense fear event to get my get my stress down, not up. Anywho, I now have to play. Um... I'm going to have to play my red card out of my way, um, which has an ability which isn't an action. So this is like a free bonus action. So I don't have to do it, but I get it for free. 
um, because it isn't it isn't an action or a maneuver. So I still get to do a basic maneuver, I get to do a basic action, and I get to do this if I want to, where I can discard one focus to move into an enemy space and then move that enemy one space. So that is going to be um, something something useful, something useful for 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 when I. I'm getting. I mean, I'm in a lot of trouble with these zombies. I'm just thinking what I'm going to do about it. Yeah, zombies. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. If I want to move out of this space, um, I have to exert one for each ready zombie because I have to kind of struggle my way free. Um, so I don't want to do a maneuver that does that. I could do a grapple, which is a basic attack, um, which will knock down one zombie, and um, then if I can use a success, it will knock down the other one, and may even be able to kill some zombies. Um, but then that uses up my attack or, or my action for the turn as well. So I'm not sure I really want to do that. Um, so yeah, what do I do? I reckon. I'm going to use this free ability, this extra bonus ability, because I do have a focus token, because um, everybody starts the game with one. Everybody gets one. It says, discard one focus to move into an enemy space. Move that enemy one space. Um, I'm being an idiot. When I, when I was talking about him being a survivor, I'm, I'm being being an idiot. He's a, he's a rival. He's actually classed as a rival. It actually says on his, on his uh, enemy sheet, he is a rival. So he's, he's not a survivor, he's not classed as a survivor, he's classed as a rival. Um, rivals do fall in the remit of enemies, so I can move into his space. So I'll do that. Oh, I have to discard my focus token. So, oh, that's a trust token! I don't have a focus token! Oh, damn you slightly generic sheriff's badge symbol. Blast and darnations and doggone it and darn it and blah. I'll move back there then, shall I? Right. Plan B, methinks. Okay, things are going to go badly for me. I'm going to have to do a grapple, which is a standard attack. Um, so, as standard, what will happen is that will knock down one zombie. And then I've got to roll. So I will bring in my little doodad roller. Um, Two white dice for the grapple, plus two black dice for my stress on my in my stress pool, plus one dice for having a zombie on my space. Not good. I mean, maybe I should have gone. Maybe I go for. A, do I want to exert twice and lose lose two hit points? It might. Oh, is that the better way to go? I can always heal later on. Do I want to do that? Oh, do I? I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. Oh, let's show you a combat anyway. Right. This is a disaster. Right. I've got two um, exerts there. And I've got two of these swishy lightnings. So those are threats. And that means the threat level goes up once for each dice. So that will go up by two. Threat is what brings new um, new zombos into play. Like I need more zombies. Um, unfortunately, um, I mean, I can exert once to get another success. And that other success will allow me to knock down the other zombie. Um, I'm going to have to exert one to move out of the space anyway. So I might as well exert one discard a card in order to knock him down because at least that will stop him being a bully for the turn and then I am going to so that was my a that was my action the absolute disaster that it was and then I'm going to move away from the zombies I'm gonna go one two so I'm just down there I'm just down there. Right. Um, I can't do my discard of focus thing because I haven't got any focus. Um, and that's it. That was an absolute disaster of a turn, really. Um, right. Yeah. So now there, there, there will be an event phase. Um, so first of all, Shane will do his thing. And um, on his rival card, it says... 
Shane moves into Rick's space. Rick exerts one and moves into an adjacent space towards the nearest walker. Um, well, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? Um, I guess he moves all the way down here. Um, and then and then I have to exert, which means I have to discard another card. And then he pushes me up here towards the nearest walkers. Um, and then there is the event phase. And the event phase was, was this. Um, place a lock token in the random space. When the walker activates this turn, it moves towards that token. At the start of the objective phase, discard that token. Um, I'm assuming I have to gain another stress for that because there's nothing I can do to put one of my tokens on that card. So, so that's what I'll do. I'll gain another stress. Ho-hum. With all of that unpleasantness out of the way, it's time to activate all the Zombos. So first of all, we have the reanimation step where any corpse tokens on the board become knocked down walkers, but we don't have any of those. So we go straight to the walker activation. Now, normally they would come towards the closest survivor, or, or sorry, the closest human, whether that be survivor or arrival. Um, but we selected that um, center flesh um, event, which meant they're all gonna move towards a lock symbol, which is just over here. So all of the zombies that are active on the board are going to move towards that lock symbol. So I'm doing that now. You won't be able to see most. Most of these activations will happen off off camera. There's a zombie here that um, he's got a choice of two directions to go. And because the most recent map card um, favoured up and down, which wave that in the camera, see up and down, um, he will actually move down here, which is still moving closer towards the that lock token. But um, still moving towards me too, which isn't great. He's going to go this way. There's a zombie just up here. He's going to go that way. And um, there's another zombie here, um, which has a choice of direction. So we'll go down. And uh, there's a zombie there that will go up. You can just, just see his little tootsie pegs um, at the top of the camera there. Um, having moved all of those, we have to ready any of the knockdown walkers. Um, so these guys will stand up here. And what you're supposed to do, by the way, is when you move zombies, um, after they've moved, you knock them down, and then you immediately stand them back up again in the, in the ready zombie phase. The reason you knock them down is just so you know that you've moved them this turn. It's just um, a bookkeeping thing, so I haven't actually bothered to do it. Um, it's a bit of, it's one of those rules, really. It's a little bit fiddly, because you, you move the zombies, you knock them down, you immediately stand them back up again. You start to feel a little bit like your bookkeeping, like you're playing with an abacus rather than actually sort of moving zombies around. So I'm, I'm not keen on that rule. Um, it's almost one of those situations where double-sided tokens might have been better than miniatures for the zombies because you could have just flipped the token over to it. I know it's not a massive difference between between standing a miniature up and things like that, but I don't know. It just felt like it feels a little bit more more like work than I would really like it to be. Anyway, um, after they've all ready to do the threat step. Now, my threat is on two because I rolled those two lightning bolt symbols when I uh, had the black, uh, when I did my attack action and rolled those black dice. So I have to spawn two zombos. Um, and you do that by drawing a map card and placing the zombo on the, uh, on the, on the space. So there's the first card. Say so the ink, the the, uh, the blood splat represents where the zombie will appear. So that's quite good. That's out of the way. Up over in the top board and then the second card is not quite so good that's a little bit more up in my face than i would actually like so those appear they don't activate this turn because that's the last thing that happens in the walker phase um yeah so then there's uh, that that finishes the walker activation and then there is the objective phase where we check to see if i have achieved my objective i have absolutely not achieved my obje objective he's Still there, he's still looking like he's gonna do a number on me. So um, we will continue into the next round, but we will do that in the next episode. Um, hope you're enjoying this. Um, um, I hope I'm not making too many mistakes. Um, as, I, as I edit, um, I'm sort of reviewing what I'm doing and hopefully um, everything, everything is going okay and it all makes sense and my general gibberish is, is making some kind of sense to you if you're still watching at this point. Um, if you're enjoying it, let me know. Um, if, if you think this game looks decent or, or whatever, let me know that too. Um, I'm still in two minds about the whole thing at the moment, but um, I will continue being in two minds in the next episode because I'm signing off for now. So bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye.